Hello everyone and welcome to the Saturday, August 23rd show for Classroom 2.0 Live. Today's topic is 81 Dash. Um, I'm one of the co-hosts, Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George and Tammy Moore. Thanks. Special thanks to Tammy Moore for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guests today are Carlos Fernandez and Jerry Switek. The 81 Dash website is right here. So we'll find out what 81 Dash is today. Our show always has a live binder. This is the, the live binder for today's show. Notice that the tabs are on the left, but there are color coded tabs. This is the 81 Dash tab, and each of the tabs that are sub indented from that are the tabs for this particular show. These other dark blue tabs are for other shows as well as the uh, Classroom 2.0 Live resources where one of the things you'll be able to find is the um, survey link. So at the end of the month, like today is the last show for this month, um, this, this will be the the August 2014 live binder. So all of the month's shows are in one live binder. So you click on the title, the blue title tab, to get the information for that particular show. And the tabs are on the left rather than across the top. Here's the link for the live binder, and Peggy's already put that in chat. Each show is recorded, and the recordings are posted on the archives and resources page. The link is here. This is not a live link. You won't be able to click on this, this and go any place, but it will be in chat. We always like to find out where in the world people are logging in from. I'm logging in from central Pennsylvania. I know Peggy logs in from Phoenix, Arizona. Tammy logs in from southwest Arkansas. Uh, Paula is logging in from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm not sure where Jerry and Carlos are logging in from. You can also type in, in the chat where you're from. We usually have an international audience, and we do today as well. We are going to ask some poll questions. The first one, have you ever used a back channel? And again, you vote with that icon up near your name underneath the participant's title. This will not work as a voting tool. You can also type in the chat. That's also a back channel, typing in the chat. So once people have voted, I will post the responses to the whiteboard. And out of those that voted, over half said yes, they have used a back channel. 56%, 32% have not. The next question, and I'll clear those answers. Have you ever used back channeling with your students? If yes, please type which, which tool you have used in the chat. Again, I'll post those answers.
Only 28% voted yes for that. 52% voted no. And for our third question, I'm going to be changing the polling type. Which device have you or would you typically use when back channeling? A, computer or laptop, B, tablet, C, phone, D, I haven't back channeled. I will post those results. And most people have voted for a computer laptop with a tie for second with ta with a tablet, and I haven't back channeled. Um, Again, today's topic's 81 Dash. I'm Lori Moffitt, along with Peggy George and Tammy Moore, the show hosts. I'm going to turn the mic over to Paula Noggle, who will introduce our guests today. Hello, everyone. This is Paula Noggle from New Orleans, Louisiana. And I'm thrilled to introduce Carlos Fernandez, the creator of 81 Dash, and our good friend Jerry Switek who has been an early adopter of using 81 Dash. <clears throat> Carlos Fernandez has been an educator in Florida since 2006, and his experiences in both the classroom and the school district roles have heavily impacted his views on learning and instruction. His focus has been on influencing professional development environments and creating educational web applications for educators. Since 2013, he has devoted many, many hours to the development of an app called 81 Dash, and it's his other baby. Carlos and I are connected educators to the Discovery Educator Network, or the DEN community. And we got to spend a week together with other DEN stars in 2003 at the DEN Summer Institute in Burlington, Vermont. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to have been invited by Carlos into a Google Hangout where he demoed 81 Dash and revealed the features of his newest version of the app. It was after that Google Hangout that I knew we had to have Carlos on the show so that he could share 81 Dash with all of you. It is definitely a tool you are going to want to add to your technology toolkit. Jerry Switek also lives in Florida and is a certified teacher and district technology specialist for the Citrus County School District. He works with teachers and students, helping them integrate technology into their classrooms. Jerry is the founder and organizer of Ed Camp Citrus, and I know he's very busy preparing for the fifth annual event, which takes place on Saturday, September 6th. He is also very involved in the Ed Chat movement on Twitter and is the archivist of the weekly Ed Chat discussions. Jerry and I first met on Simple K-12 several years ago when we were presenters who followed each other during their Days of Learning free webinar series. Seems like we both get to do lots of Google Days together. I was thrilled to meet Jerry face to face for the first time at ISTE 2014 in Atlanta this summer. Please join me in welcoming these two awesome educators as they teach us about Dash 81, Carlos Fernandez and Jerry Swite. All right, thank you, Paula. First of all, um, I wanted to thank uh, definitely Paula, uh, Lori, Peggy, Tammy. Thank you so much for your incredible work here with Classroom 2.0 Live and 
everything that you guys do. It's absolutely incredible. I know Jerry and I, and I'm speaking for Jerry, and I'll let him chime in in a second here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're huge fans, and, and this is we're definitely an, uh, an honor to be here. Right, Jerry? Absolutely, no doubt. So uh, what we wanted to do is we're based out of uh, Florida, Sunshine State, and uh, what we wanted to kind of do is just talk a little bit about 81 Dash, what it is. Um, we get we get tons and tons of questions through um, uh, tons and tons of questions through uh, Facebook and through Twitter, and wanting to know more about this. Um, and before I get into the absolute details, let me just start off by saying I'm going to speak here for Jerry. We're huge Web 2.0 fans, so we've been involved with education for a very long time. Um, we've taught. We're actually a team of three. It's uh, Jerry, myself, and uh, my wife Stephanie Fernandez. She's a first grade teacher, and I come from a secondary background as well as from a district background like uh, like Jerry. And we're huge fans of Web 2.0. Anytime we see an application, you know, you're using live binders. Somebody mentioned Padlet in the in the uh, in the chat earlier. We love it. We're we're huge fans, and we're constantly getting behind some of uh, these young entrepreneurs and older entrepreneurs that that come up with these brilliant ideas. Um, and they've really motivated us to to build what we currently have. So. We wanted to build a, a EDU dashboard, something that was simple and clean, unlike a LMS, a learning management system out there that are incredible and they're extremely uh, functional and have this amazing functionality, but in many cases can, it's just a little bit too much. So we wanted to build a dashboard, but build it with a purpose. Um, so a little history on the on 81 Dash is there are other phenomenal back channels out there. You can use, in case you're unfamiliar with what a back channel is. Uh, think of it as a tool, a website, or some type of tool that students or teachers can use to communicate. That's the way I like to think of a, as a back channel. And and there's so many out there. Uh, technically, you could use a text message for a back channel. Um, you can use uh, Twitter, Facebook. There's other great Web 2.0 uh, competitors out there, and ones that we've used in the past as well. And it's it's something that definitely has so much power and belongs in education. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is that every time we use a back channel, we've always come across some type of issues, something that we're that we're that is not a perfect fit or we're not exactly happy with. And the reason for that is that educators did not build it. They weren't a lot of these back channels. They're kind of forced to be an education tool. They weren't really built with an education mindset. Or by educators. So, one of the things that we did is we we strongly believe in in that same kind of ed camp model, you know, uh, built by teachers for teachers. That's something that we strongly, uh, extremely believe in. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, what does 81 dash stand for? And in a, in a very short story, um, we were playing with with different numbers and and ideas, and we were playing with symbols. And one of the symbols that really stood out for us is the infinite sign. So if you take the eight and you actually turn it around, it's the infinite. So we saw it as the infinite power of one, which is uh, 81 dash, and dash obviously being a dashboard. So for us, this was the, the the infinite power really comes from communication. Communication is is absolutely huge. Um, it's not only a, a it's incredible how we can get on Twitter, or get on Facebook, get on a back channel and send a text across the world. I mean, we saw people, I think it was from Russia and Italy in the chat. That was that was incredible. Um, and, and reaching so many people through communication. So our thought process is let's build a tool that's strong enough to communicate, be safe in the classroom, but start getting our students and our teachers exposed to this concept of, I'm not going to call it multitasking, but as soon as you have a great idea, share it out with other people. And, and let these ideas drive instruction and drive curriculum. Um, so we wanted to build some type of medium that was safe for students and increase productivity um, in their educational experiences. So as I said, this was built by teachers for teachers. And, I, and, and Paula mentioned our relationship with, uh, uh, with Discovery Education and the DEN network. I've got to kind of go back and, and give you a little little idea, a little, little breakdown of where this kind of started. We basically, I, I started creating uh, this back channel, started coding it nice and basic, focused in on the design side before we started getting into the basic coding side, 
And one of the things I did was we were in an ed camp in, um, at the ICE conference. There was a, a conference in Chicago, uh, in Illinois. And we got a bunch of teachers. We were in the middle of ed camp. And they were all discovery education teachers. And uh, they were, I'm, I'm very um, passionate and, and, and fortunate to call them friends. And you know, I pitched them this idea, and I showed them some of the stuff that I was developing, and just one thing led to another, and I got incredible feedback from them. So it was feedback after feedback of what they were looking for in terms of a, a safe tool for teachers. So throughout this process, I have to tell you, I'm going to also give a quick shout out before we start talking real deep into this, into other education entrepreneurs that are absolutely incredible. And I, and I, and I know that you've had some of these guys on your show. Uh, people like Adam Bellows, for example, with Edge Clipper, uh, Steve Dembo has been incredible. Um, those who really stand out for me just because they have really, really helped me out. It's incredible in, in, in terms of entrepreneurship and you think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a teacher, I can't, you know, I can't build anything or I don't have these entrepreneur ideas. Those are the best type of entrepreneurs, uh, teachers are, because they know exactly what they want, exactly what works. And in listening to some of them and giving me some of the advices and, and pitfalls, I also want to mention, um, like for example, the creator of uh, Infuse Learning. Uh, she was absolutely incredible in giving me some advice on, you know, if you could go back, how could you roll out a, a successful product? Um, and then at ISTE, I got to meet people uh, like the creators of Padlet, Kaizena, Class Dojo. And you would think that this would kind of be more competition. It's not. We were, not, we were sharing ideas. So. Um, well, before I kind of introduce Jerry, I wanted to just let these educators and teachers know that number one, besides the fact that you're all amazing and you're impacting the world incredibly every single day, I, I, as I know I used to do and my wife still does every single day, you know, know that you can do other things. You can become an entrepreneur. You can use some of these ideas and really uh, build upon them. So I, I really challenge you to. Uh, um, get out there and, and, and continue to change the world. So one of the things we want to go over is w what does 81 Dash look like? What is the functionality for you guys that are uh, brand new to it and have possibly never used it? I've got, uh, he is he's my left hand, he's my right hand. Jerry has been absolutely amazing. If, if you're a fan of 81 Dash and the back channel, you need to just hang tight for a couple more months because uh, I've been working very closely with Jerry, and he's been my absolute lead in what I consider 81 Dash version 2. And it's going to blow your mind away. And he has been hands on from the beginning on functionality and what is it, taking some of this incredible feedback that we've learned from our teachers um, as we go to different spots. And they're sharing pictures with us on Facebook and saying, here's our success stories and our edge wins. And we're, we couldn't be uh, grateful. We couldn't be more grateful uh, for that. So. Jerry, why don't you uh, run us by uh, 81 Dash? Absolutely. Now, now, just to be clear, version 1 is pretty awesome, too. So <laughs> uh, Version 1 is incredible. Yeah, we're You're not, right. We're not just waiting for version 2 to come out to be awesome. We think version 1 is, is pretty amazing as well. So give me just a second. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And uh, we'll get into uh, talking about 81 Dash and, and how a teacher can use it. and and just how easy and, uh, and, and really very, very simple it is for a teacher to use with their students. So um, everybody should be able to see my screen. Carlos, is, uh, does that look good? Yes, it looks yep. great. Yep. Everything yep. is a go. Yep. 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 That's great. Perfect. Perfect. Just wanted to make sure. So this is the 81 dash, uh, dashboard. And I've already gone in and created my account. So I am in here as a, as a teacher right now. Uh, and, and when I say that, that doesn't mean we have separate, we really don't have separate teacher and student accounts. We have users. And uh, as a teacher, when I create my account, I have the ability to go in here and, and build my rooms. And as, as a room creator, I have the options to do a lot of different things with my room. So over here on the left hand corner, actually let me show you the process for creating a room and how simple it is first. So when I sign into my 81 Dash account, in the upper right hand corner I have this section called Dash Room. And with a brand new account, you won't see any of these rooms created or rooms joined. Although if you sign into your account now, if you've already had one, 
um, you'll find that the Classroom 2.0 room, if you joined our room, is going to be listed here under Rooms Joined. And if you ever needed to leave that room for some reason, you just click on the Select button here under Actions and you can leave the room. But up here in the upper right-hand corner is a, just a big plus sign. Again, we, we really focused on simplicity here and wanted to make this a tool that was dead simple for any educator to use. So up here, you click on that plus sign to add a new room. When that room, uh, when that create dash room comes up, you simply give it a name. You can also set it to expire in one day, in one week, one month, or one year. And the room, the Classroom 2.0 room that we've created for you at 81-.com slash Classroom 2.0 uh, has been set to expire after one year. So what does that mean? That means the room will no longer be accessible. That means that any of the resources that are contained inside that room will be lost. However, we have built in ways to be able to save those resources uh, inside of the room so they're not lost forever. So I'd simply give it a, a name. I'll just call this test. It's probably going to exist already, so I'm not actually going to create the room. I assign it an expiration time, and I click on Create Room. And just like that, that room is going to show up over here in my Rooms Created list on the right-hand side. So let me go back into that Classroom 2.0 room, and I want to share with you some of the administrator functions before we get into talking about the chat. So over here on the right hand, the far right-hand side, I have the area here called Actions. And you'll notice that in the rooms that I have joined, I only have one action available to me, and that's to leave that room. So this is the same thing your students will see. Your students will see a list of rooms that they've joined. Uh, and if you're in a high school, for example, and you have multiple teachers that are using this, your students can use the same username and password. They can then join all of those different rooms using that same username. So the kids then, if they needed at the end of the semester or the end of the quarter, if they want to leave that room, they have that option available to them there. Now, the creator of the room has some additional functionality. Here underneath the actions, if I click on that select, you'll notice that I have five different options in here. Again, we wanted the teachers to be able to see some information about their room, but also keep it really simple. So here under room information, room info, I see who created the room, the name of the room, I also see when, what day, and what time this room is going to expire. So you can see we set this for one year, which means that this room will be available through August 23rd of next year at 1043 Eastern Time. This is the room URL. So when your students are joining, this is the URL that you would send your students to. Or if you were doing a, you know, setting up a back channel for a faculty meeting or, uh, or any type of meeting with, uh, with teachers, professional development, you would share this room URL with them. And that little comment there mentions that as well. As many of you are discovering, when you click on that URL to come to the room, you are brought to the login screen. You set up your username and your password, give us a little bit of information about yourself, and you become a member of that room. Also here under Actions, I have the ability to completely delete my room. When I delete the room, it's completely gone. All the resources, everything that was contained in that room is gone. So if, if I need to delete the room for whatever reason before the expiration date, I can do that manually. I can also lock the room. If all of my students have joined my room and I don't, want to, I don't want to allow anybody else from the outside to join my room, I simply choose lock room and that room will no longer be available for any other members to join. Sort of a, one of those safety features we've built into it. I can also click on users and this is going to show me a list of all of the users that have joined that room. So we see Dave and Paula and Peggy and Dorothea and, and uh, Susan. Uh, we also see Dejan and Nenad, Virginia. So we've got a bunch of students that have joined this room, or a bunch of teachers, since this is a professional development here. And then I also, and this is a function, this is one of my, my favorite functions, the ability for the teacher to upload their students. So we don't have to have our students creating their own accounts. As a teacher, I can upload a very simple spreadsheet. Let me show you what that spreadsheet looks like real quick. I can upload that spreadsheet of users and their accounts are created automatically. So here's that spreadsheet. I simply put in the student's username, put in a password, their full name, and an email address if one is available. And I then upload that right here into 81-. Dash. 
the students will then receive an email or the teachers will receive an email, whoever it is you've added to that list. That email will contain a link to your room and it will also contain their username and their password information. Uh, really super, super simple way for teachers to be able to add their students in bulk. You don't have to involve, of course, if you were doing it on a large scale, you could involve the IT department to, you know, to import a huge list of kids, but what a really simple way for a teacher to be able to import a whole bunch of students at a single time and not have to worry about, um, you know, getting the kids to, to go through the, the steps, although it's very simple, but not have to worry about the kids going in and creating their accounts. So that is the, the uh, sort of the dashboard, the admin dashboard over here on the right hand side. Over on the right, if I click on the lock tab, that's going to show me any rooms that I currently have locked. So maybe I've received a brand new student to my class and I need to unlock that room momentarily to allow that student in. I would do that from that lock tab. I'd have the, the same actions here. Go ahead, you have something to say, Carlos? Hey, uh, Jerry, sorry. You, you knew I was going to interrupt you about 40 yeah, times here. Um, yeah, so yeah, no what I wanted to mention is the fact that, you know, when, when, when we built 81 Dash, we built this with the student and the teacher mindset, 100%. And when you build anything that deals with students and teachers, first of all, safety comes in always first. And that locked room feature was was huge for us. That was on the top of our list because uh, we've seen in, in many cases where uh, another student from another class hijacks a room and starts writing something inappropriate. So we needed we needed some type of solution uh, for this to make sure that, that, that this never would happen with 81 Dash. And it hasn't because we put that locked in feature. So it, it's definitely uh, something, something extremely safe. And, and I also wanted to mention that somebody asked, were these rooms publicized everywhere, anywhere? And, and the answer is no. So unless a teacher publicizes it online on their website, no one really knows what your room name is. Excellent. Great point, Carlos. So, uh, yeah, so we've talked about the Dash room area. Let's talk about the, the Dash chat. And one of the things I want to show you too, I can minimize, if I want to clear up a little bit of real space, uh, real estate space, I guess, I can click on minimize here and it'll, it'll free up a little bit of space. So here now, this is our Dash chat. And this is what the, the, the teachers, this is what the, the students are going to be um, submitting all of their, their discussions. Uh, you'll notice down here next to the message window, that we have, there's a submit button, of course, entering your message and hitting the enter key also works just fine. But we also have the ability for members of the room to upload files. And, and this was another piece that we felt as educators was really, really important and was missing in a lot of the other uh, back channel tools that are out there. We wanted to have the ability for, for, uh, for teachers, for students, to be able to share resources while the back channel is going on. Uh, and it's proven to be invaluable. When I was using this in the classroom with students, uh, when I introduced this to teachers in my district for students, this is one of the features that they love because it's so great for them to be able to quickly share these resources through this back channel. So you'll notice that all of the, all of the, uh, the messages are limited to 160 characters, uh, which is more than enough in most cases. There you see in the back channel, Carlos has just uploaded a PowerPoint presentation. So we could very easily tie this into an existing lesson and provide all of the lesson resources right to the kids right there in the back channel and that will be available to them until that room is deleted or they leave that, well actually until that room is deleted uh, or expires, that resource will be available to them that entire time. You'll also notice here a little feature that I have that you do not. I have a little trash can here. This little trash can allows the creator of the room to remove an inappropriate message. So let's say, for example, this little note here, let me see if I can find, let me find one of mine here. I don't want to, don't want to offend anybody. I'm going to remove this hello message here. So all I have to do if a student puts something in there that's inappropriate, I click on this little trash can, just like that, and the message is gone. But it's not completely gone. The message has been removed from this chat, however, if I look at the transcript of that chat, and this we felt was really important because that student has put something into that chat that's inappropriate, there needed to be some way of having you know, some evidence if there needed to be repercussions on that student. Maybe it was something that they did over and over again. So just by, with a simple click of a mouse, I can get a, uh, a transcript in a PDF format of the entire chat. 
And you'll notice here that this first one is in red, is highlighted in red. That was the inappropriate message that I deleted from the room. So it highlights it in that transcript so that I, if I needed to, and, and hopefully we never encounter this, but if I needed to, I could go to the administrator and say, here, here is the transcript of the chat. Here is the username of the child that you know, committed this violation and go from there. So again, we really, really wanted to, to make this uh, useful and, and really simple for, for the teachers to use. So that is, that is the chat. Again, I can minimize that if I wanted to. Another super really important feature here that we felt was, it was going to be important for teachers would be, and, and users of the room, would be the ability to search this chat. So let me find something. Here we go. The word neat. Annette posted, just joined how neat in, down here in the middle of the chat. So if I click on the dash chat search function here, I'm going to type in the word neat, as long as I spell it correctly. Click on search, and it'll then show me in that window all of the results that contain that particular keyword. And this, again, is just another way to be able to find, uh, maybe if we, as a teacher we're looking for a theme and our kids really should be focusing on a particular topic, um, it would allow me to find that information quickly and easily. We go ahead and put neat in one more time and do another search. You'll notice now the results have changed to two because Carlos just threw the word neat in there. And now when I scroll down, it shows us in chronological order the messages that contain the word neat. So we felt that that was really important and something, again, that was missing in some of the other really great tools that are out there. So that's the dash chat area. Hey, Jerry, also, with, with, every, yeah, with every notification that you see there in terms of communication, there's always a date and timestamp, which we thought was important for teachers, too, because some teachers were always looking for different ways of using a back channel. And I've seen teachers come up to me and be like, we use this as office hours. So they set themselves available between, we'll say, 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. And it's always nice to see when was the student actually sending them a message, because in some cases, uh, they'll send a message at 1 and 2 in the morning. There are some students that work at that time. And that's, that's valuable information for that teacher to see, hey, why is the student working at 2 in the morning? What's going on at home? Are there some other side issues? So that time stamp is, is extremely valuable. Yeah, Kathleen just mentioned in the, in the back channel that it seems like something she could use with, with students or parents. Uh, Kathleen, that's a really great point. Um, you know, I think Sometimes when tools like this are developed, parents are sort of an afterthought. And, and uh, we, we have the exact same thought that this could be used as a, a means of communication um, between teacher and anybody. Um, you know, the teacher just creates, as Carlos mentioned, the teacher just creates this as their sort of, you know, quote unquote virtual office. And any messages that, you know, need to be communicated to the teacher or back to the parent can be done through this. So it, you're absolutely right. So let me show you a couple of these other areas. Over on the right-hand side, we have this area called dash task. And this is something that we wanted to implement, it, especially for use in the classroom, because when our kids are using a back channel, if they're not focused or if they don't have some tasks that need to be completed, sometimes that chat can sort of go astray a little bit. So we implemented this feature called dash, dash tasks for the creator of the room and, or for anybody in the room to be able to add some of these details. So maybe it's, uh, you know, answer question one. I'm just going to put something really simple in there and create that task. When I create that task, all of you on your end will see that new task appear in the dash task section. You'll also have the option there to complete the task by placing a check mark in that box. So as you're going through and, and you're using this back channel chat and these kids are going through and answering your questions that you have in the tasks, when they've done it, they just simply hit that check mark or uh, select that check box on the right hand side and it completes that particular task. So when I complete a task, if I click on that box again and select completed tasks, it'll show me a list, a running list of all of those tasks that have been completed. We scroll down a little bit more here. We have this section called dash mentions. Now you'll notice we have, let's see, and you guys can play with this a little bit if you want to in the back channel. Carlos at 1229 sent me a message and he put the at sign in front of my username. This works very similar to Twitter. 
and we wanted to implement a function like this because when this chat really gets going and there's a lot of information in there, we wanted the members of the chat, the users of the chat, to be able to quickly and easily identify those messages that were directed at them. So in this case, Carlos just wanted to send me a little note that said, hey, you're doing a great job, buddy, and thank you, Carlos, I appreciate that. I can go ahead and reply back to Carlos at Fernandez C, oops, if I spelled it correctly, E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z-C-4. You got a space there. I do. My, my big fat fingers are failing me right now. So I can, uh, I can just say thanks for the kind words. And this is going to show up not just in the dash mentions area, but also show up in the entire room and made it visible to the entire so room. So Jerry, one of the things that, that I get asked a lot was why, why is there the student's name or the teacher's name and the username? Well, for this exact feature is why we needed a username. We wanted to make sure we use that username because it's, it's unique to that one individual. So you can't have that same username for multiple people. However, we wanted to give students and teachers the flexibility of being creative with a username. Um, but then what happens is if that's the only thing that we would have used and not have the student name, well, if I'm teaching 160 students or even 30 students, I don't know who at bad boy 55 is. So it's nice to see at bad boy 55 and right next to that person say, oh, that's Carlos Fernandez so, or Jerry Switek. So that's why we have the names and usernames. Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. Um, so that is the, that's what the dash mentions are all about. And I, can, I have the ability, if I have a whole bunch of mentions in there and I want to clear them out, I can hit this clear mention button here to remove them. You'll also notice that when I hover over the, the particular message that's there, I can reply to that message right from there as well. And it's going to open up and automatically add that username for me right in there. So here I can put, this is another test and hit send and then it's automatically going to add that right into the dash chat. And you know, I haven't I mentioned it briefly, but a really important component that we needed to have in place was no direct communication between student and student, no direct messaging between student and teacher. We we hear too many horror stories of things that have gone on between, you know, teachers and students because they have the ability to message one another directly. So we wanted to alleviate that. So everything that is, is added into the room is made public, with the exception of the next section I'm going to show you, which is right down here, these dash notes. Now these dash notes are personal. These are notes that are only visible to the logged in user. So as this back channel is going on, I may find some really interesting things or maybe there's some things I need to make note of myself so I don't forget them. I can come down here and I can add them to my dash notes section. So when I click on the plus sign here to add a new note, I'm just going to call this, we'll call this classroom 2.0 and my description will be this is a new note. Click on create note. It's going to then add that into my dash notes section. And this now is only visible to me. When the room is expired or deleted, that, those dash notes will go away. So we gave the users a way to download all of those notes. And again, just by clicking on this notes download button, it's going to download and create a PDF file of all of those notes in that particular room that I wanted to, to save and, and even potentially be able to share with somebody else at some point if I needed to. So that's, that's the tool. I mean, it's, it's really simple, but it is extremely effective and, and very, very good at what it does. And, and we're really excited about um, taking the feedback that we've received from so many teachers all over the world like Carlos said, through our Facebook page and via Twitter and via email. Uh, we're really excited about implementing a lot of those additional features and functions in version 2. But as I mentioned earlier, we think version 1 is pretty amazing and, and really useful for teachers too. So. You know, uh, Jerry, and, and I really wanted to thank some of these teachers that are sending us, um, sending us pictures. Please keep them coming. That is like our motivation for moving forward. Um, there no is... Doubt. There is no monetization plan here. 
This is there's no big company behind 81 Dash. This is nothing more than three educators uh, wanting to do something pretty cool. Um, there is uh, no funding behind this. The the funding actually, the funding behind this came from us, us three, doing web design on the side just to make a little bit of extra money so we can pay for our servers to make sure that this kind of stays up and running without any issues. And we, it, it's it's absolutely incredible. This is true grassroots, and we could not be. Um, more proud of what we've done and more excited. I, I don't know if you can hear my voice, but get ready for version two because, <laughs> I, I mean, I was so proud of this and this is my baby and I don't even want to see this anymore because I know what's coming down the pipes is is so incredible. Um, and, and having said that, it's clean, it's simple, um, and, and give us any feedback. I've had incredible positive feedback some negative feedback, we take it all in and if somebody's not happy, we need to figure out why they're not happy because, I mean, it's it's really all about the end user and what we do with this and students. Yeah, and Carl, it was mentioned, I, I see in the back, in the uh, the chat there in the, in Collaborate, uh, Peggy mentioned uh, free, the, he's speaking our language. This is this is a tool that will always be free. This this will never be monetized, you know, we are, we're all teachers. Um, we know that classroom budgets uh, are, are non-existent now, so there, there's no money to pay for a tool like this. So this is something that we are committed to making available to teachers uh, all over the world um, for free. Uh, we're not trying to make any money on this. It's just a tool that, that we wanted to, you know, to fit a need that we had. Uh, and Carlos went out on a limb and, and built this thing and has done a fantastic job. And, you know, I'm excited to continue sharing it with my teachers, and, and I'm even more excited about having the opportunity to work on version two as as we as we move forward. So, yeah, this is something that's going to remain free. So please, you know, use it, and like Carlos said, provide that feedback to us because that's that is what's going to drive uh, all of our future versions. So yeah, it's it's just it's unethical as much as teachers do to charge them and, and take any money from them. It's just wrong. So it's it's not what we believe in as a group. So. Um, we're just happy to be a part of this. So I'll kind of transfer this back over to the uh, the amazing team. Yeah, and Paula, Paula just asked, will I be using 81 Dash during EdCamp Citrus? You're darn right I will be, Paula. Um, yeah, really excited. We're only, what, a couple of weeks out of EdCamp Citrus now, so I'm super excited about that. Okay. Uh, Lori or Tammy? Actually, no. Sorry about that. I did capture some <laughs> questions. Um, Excellent. A uh, couple of them were already answered. Uh, going to that task list, list, if some students are working on task one and others are working on task two at the same time, can the responses to each task be viewed separately by teachers and students? So not yet. So the way that the task, uh, the dash tasks work is basically when a teacher creates a dash task, it gets pushed down. Think of it as a classroom. It gets pushed down to every single student or every participant in that classroom. However, it's basically a checklist. So when an individual does a check, nobody else sees it. it it's their own personal checklist. Mm -hmm. We've seen teachers use this as uh, a way to put learning objectives or classroom objectives or even homework assignments and classwork assignments. It's a separate spot besides the actual chat itself to uh, put some instructions on what the students need to do. So it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a message that gets pushed down as a whole to everybody. Um, so there's no differentiation there for uh, individual students. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know at least one of you saw Patty's comment about um, accounts with na first name and last initial um, to avoid students' full names on sites. Um, one of you saw that. I saw the reply to it. Um, any plans for something like that? So I think that's a, a, a great idea. One of the things that we had to require is a username and some type of name. Now mm -hmm. that first name, last name, I think when, when you go to the registration page, it, it just asks for a full name. 
whatever you put in there, it will take. In many cases, okay. it asks for an email address if you're creating it. If you leave the email address blank, it will still create an account. So that's something that we thought was important. And the reason we want people to put email addresses is because anytime they lose their password, that is the quickest, easiest way to reset it. Um, sure. That they can reset automatically. However, when we're dealing with the little ones, we have seen second graders and fourth graders on 81 Dash. So what the teachers do is they go and they create, they put the teacher's email address for each student. Mm -hmm. um, so that works as well. These are just some extra features on there. Um, and and one of the things when we created 81 Dash, there is no difference between a teacher and a student when in the registration process. And I did this on purpose because it, one of the things that I, I, that I really believe in is there's some phenomenal Web 2.0 tools out there. However, my email is already jammed full with other stuff. And I do mm -hmm. not need an email from any person or any extra company or anything. So one thing that you will never get is an email from 81 Dash unless you need to reset your password and that's an automatic email. So it's, it's not something that we, we believe in. So whether it's students or teachers, everything's kept confidential and we have no way of telling the difference. Therefore, we do not communicate with anybody through email. Mm -hmm. And if I can just to make a, just a quick note about the usernames. Uh, the usernames at this point are case sensitive. So one of, the, uh, one of the questions that we get all the time is, you know, I can't log into my account and, and the person's forgetting that they use the capital letter at the beginning of their, of their username. So the, the usernames at this point are case sensitive. Of course, passwords are always case sensitive. So if you're trying to use it, you've created an account and you're unable to log in, make sure that you are checking those capital letters to ensure that you're entering it exactly as you did when you registered to use uh, the service. Thank you. Um, any plans for voice chat? So um, we yes. have discussed that. Uh, that is something that we are definitely looking at. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say I'm not sure if that's going to make it into version 2, but that is um, definitely either version 2 or version 3 feature that we're looking at where they can go and, and add audio files to that. These are the types of, and, and that was brought up to us by, uh, by an educator. I want to say maybe three features out of all of 81 Dash we have come up with. Everything else has been request. Whatever the teachers mm -hmm. request, we add it to our list. So we love that, absolutely love that. And, and without disclosing too much, yes, we are adding that to our mm -hmm. list of top priorities. <laughs> Great. Um, can you set up? Uh, the individual rooms within your account to communicate on specific topics, say with parents. So the teacher can once a teacher creates the room, they are the room admin, mm -hmm. and it's all based off what you create that URL or what you call that room name. So you can set it up. Uh, if, if you're going to do different topics with different parents, I would create multiple rooms, one mm -hmm. for each topic, mm -hmm. rather than make one and then put everything in there just because it can get really congested with with content. We we ran we ran eighty one dash at ISTE with the Ashley Judd keynote and we had um we stopped counting after right around three hundred and fifty different um educators on there. Yep. And that started flying in terms of content at the same time and it just became a, a very difficult to kind of keep up with so we definitely recommend create multiple rooms. And the beauty is once you create that room, it's your room. And you can kill that room at any time. Um, and that feature came from, you know, a, a student does say something that they shouldn't have said or you want to put a stop to that, you are in charge. You, the teacher, has the power to create, the power to end. And, and we wanted to empower teachers when we built this. It looks like Paula would like to comment on something. I will turn the mic over to her. Those are all the questions that I captured in chat. Hi, Lori. Thanks. Uh, Carlos and Jerry just wanted to thank you so much for everything that you demoed this morning. And I wanted to give a shout out to my good buddy, Jerry Blumengarten, who's in 
the room, and we all know him because Jerry has a page for that, and he's already been mentioned. Um, Carlos, just very quickly to put all my fears to rest, I teach fourth graders, nine and ten year olds, so this is the tool for me. I'm not breaking any kind of terms of service or anything like that by allowing my students to participate in an 81 dash chat room, or back channel room. Is that correct? That is correct, and I'll let Jerry talk more to that. Yeah, sure. So, so that was something that that you know every every web tool is uh, forced to, you know, uh, uphold the the law, right? COPA was passed in, in 1998. So, those children that are under the age of 13, um, because this is a sort of a closed garden uh, with parental consent, you are perfectly legal to use this with your children under the age of 13. Uh, and we've even provided for you if you in the if you go to 81 com. If I remember correctly, it is uh, dash support, I believe. Let me get out here real quick and see. I'll throw the link into the back channel chat. Yeah, if we go into 81-.com slash terms of use. So it's, I'll throw this in the back channel. But we've provided there a sample permission form. And you can you can use it, you can modify it, whatever you need to do to get the parents' permissions for the child under age of 13 to experience 81 dash. And let me go ahead and throw this back out here into the uh, chat there. And but, while, uh, yeah, while you ahead. set that up, Jerry, I want to mention every school district is absolutely different. Uh, every state, every school district, and some of them write this already in their AUPs, their um, user policies. Yep. Um, some of them have policies that are set where if you want to use a Web 2.0 tool like 81 Dash, you have to use a school email. That's, you know, everybody has different rules. So what we did is, you know, just to cover ourselves and just to make sure that we cover the schools, they felt a lot better by having a parent permission form. So we threw, like Jerry said, one in there that can be customizable. Change it how you wish. Make sure that you have uh, parents. It, you know your students and you know your parents and population better than anybody else. Um, and if there's anything that we can do, modify something uh, to make this a success in your school or school district, let us know because we're that, that's what it's about for us. Another question came into the chat. Someone noticed that students can create a back channel. Is there a way to turn that off? Uh, the teacher doesn't want them chatting with students in other classes while they're using it in their class. So those those are things that have come up with us. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, that it, it really just depends on the classroom and how that teacher handles that class. We are trying to work that this is kind of part of of, of our future plans where we are tying it to uh, basically school domains and IP addresses. So once you're within your school's IP address, you can only go and insert um, a specific school. That is kind of part of our future plans to lock it down even more mm -hmm. uh, for education. But being, like I said, that it's just three of us. We're educators. And the only funding we have is what comes out of our wallets. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working as fast as we can to kind of build and, and build more and see who we can partner up to. Uh, do things like this, but mm -hmm. that is that is definitely part of uh, future plans for us. You know, and I I think so too. Although I, I I we completely understand that teacher's concern about the kids being able to create that room, we want the students to be able to use tools like this and learn how to use them responsibly. And and if the kids want to have a way to communicate about the homework assignment or have a way to chat with one another about something that's going on in class, we wanted the kids to be able to do that. Otherwise, you know, we'd end up having to block things in our district, like you know, uh, you know, Google Box, and I mean, you know, there's there's thousands of different ways that kids can can communicate with one another online, and and we feel that if they're going to communicate anywhere, let them communicate through 81 Dash. It's a place that is a it's a safer environment, and uh, we ha you know the kids would have the ability to lock that room down if they wanted to limit it to just them and them, their friend. Um, you may have noticed also if, you, if the person who was in as a student, if you try to create an additional room, 
then that student uh, is only able to create a single room. So, but we felt it was important enough for the kids to be able to have that opportunity to build a, a single room to do some of the things outside. And, and like I said, what better place to do it than, than in a safe environment mm -hmm. like 81 Dash? So that that was our thinking. And, and as Carlos mentioned, this is something that that we're open to, you know, to taking a closer look at in, in future versions. Yeah, we just we just did not want to label in our registration. We did not want to label anybody as a student and, mm -hmm. and and pick up any information as if you know that 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 was a student. That was that was really important to us in terms of confidentiality. Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. Uh, thank you both very much. Are there any other questions that I I missed? I think I captured most of them. Where they were answered in the chat. This was great. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, to share. This is awesome. Absolutely, and thank you for having us. Um, I, I think you showed our, our contact information. Um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Definitely, so feel free to reach out to us on Twitter if there's anything we can we can answer, or Facebook, or any form of communication. We are we are all ears and. We'd love to hear from you. There was another question that just came in. Is there a way for a teacher to see what is being said in the rooms the students set up? My guess is no, because they're separate Cur accounts. If if you know if you know what the URL is, mm -hmm. then you can the teacher can join that room mm -hmm. and can and can sort of moderate it and and, mm -hmm. uh, and keep an eye on it. Um, but uh, if the if the students are keeping that URL secret, then currently. No, there wouldn't be any way for that teacher to uh, to see what's going on in that mm -hmm. chat. Carlos, did you did you want to add something to that? No, that's that's right. Um, okay. And and the one thing that I will tell you, this is based off talking to other incredible products and companies. Um, I just don't want to name any of them right now and, and call them out, but they've had this issue where uh, one of the products that I know for off the top of my head, they request in the beginning, "Are you a teacher or a student?" And what they're seeing is students are going in as teachers, and they're pretending to be teachers to get access to creating their own rooms or creating their own information. And and that's one something that we did not want to get into. Mm -hmm. um, we we really want that teacher to kind of be in charge and and and, and stick to it. And as that teacher, I think I, I've never seen a, t a a teacher sit down. Teachers are always on their feet, running a million miles an hour. And as they're going and walking around that room, it's it is very quick and easy to see if that student's in the uh, in the right um, room or not. And you can also see how many rooms they have created. So it, it's really just a personal preference on how they want to handle that. But believe me when I say we're we're looking into more and more security uh, features right now. Um, but we we definitely think we've got a, an amazing. Product and it, it it stands on its own mm -hmm. right now in terms of security. And uh, just uh, one last quick note: Maureen mentioned in the in the uh, the Blackboard chat that her admins at her former school turned off uh, anything that had chat in it. So she's wondering if her new school would allow 81 Dash. And, and Maureen, if there's any questions about anything at all from you or from your administrators at your new school, please have them email us, and, and we'll be happy to address any. Uh, you know any issues or any con concerns or questions that may come up, and we would love you know we'd love your administrators' feedback as well, so we can continue to to evolve and 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 mold this product to suit uh, every educator's needs. So, thank you again. This was this was awesome. I really enjoyed this. Great. We'll go ahead and wrap up the show for today. Here are our upcoming shows for Classroom 2.0 Live. Next Saturday, August 30th, there is no show because of the Labor Day holiday in the United States. So September 6th, we'll have Joan Young, Encouragement in the Classroom. September 13th, Karma Yancey, Mike Fisher, and Tina Schneider, Career Development Student Live Binders um, from the top 10 e ePortfolio Live Binder winner. There are lots of student examples from Karma's Junior High Career Ed course. And September 20th, Perneal Rick Global Read Aloud Project. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's newest endeavor. 
he has gathered together all of his uh, educator PD resources at one place, including the host your own webinar again. Um, so that's available at the Learning Revolution Project. You can nominate a featured teacher using the form CR20 Live Featured Teacher Nominate without the E at the end. Um, you can even nominate yourself for a monthly featured teacher to be a monthly featured teacher presenter. When you exit the show today, your browser should open the link for the Classroom 2.0 Live survey. Um, Peggy will also post that link in the chat. It's also in the live binder in the Classroom 2.0 resources, so it's available in many different locations. At the end of that survey, you can request a professional development certificate. Please make sure the email that you use to do so is a personal email rather than a school email address because these certificates tend to get blocked by schools. So you may request one of these certificates. And now you, the, not only does, is the name of the show on the certificate, your name is on the certificate. The video and audio collection for the recordings are available at iTunes U, and the link is here. Again, this is not a live link. The link uh, is in the um, live binder as well as on the, the web page. There's also an RSS feed for the show archives. That's available on the Weebly site for Classroom 2.0 Live. So lots of different ways to access the recordings. So special thanks today to Carlos Fernandez and Jerry Switek, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, and to everyone today who participated in the show. Thanks all so much. And in order for that recording to process, remember you do have to leave the room.